<laughs> Liz, you were muted, I think. Oh, just referring to the cat. I was just trying to get the cat evicted. <laughs> Aaron, you're going to say when we're live, are you? Yeah, I will confirm when we are live. Yeah. Thank you. You were muted. Okay, I can confirm that we're now live. Thank you. Uh, so uh, good morning to members, officers and uh, members of the public who are viewing this live stream of this meeting. Uh, so welcome to the meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council Cabinet. My name's uh, Councillor Bridget Smith and I'm the leader of the Count of South Cambridgeshire District Council and I'm chair of the Cabinet. So for information of members of the public, the Cabinet, which is made up of myself and eight lead Cabinet members, is responsible for most of the Council's services, for preparing a budget and for the Council's major policies and strategies, which are then considered by full Council. So uh, uh, members of um, most of the members of the Cabinet are present. I won't introduce everybody because you'll be able to see their names attached to their photographs or their live, live, live streams. Uh, so the normal procedure at Cabinet is to take votes by affirmation and we will continue with this tradition. When we move to a vote on any item, I will ask if uh, members agree with the proposal and if any member wants to either vote against the proposal or to abstain, then a roll call will be taken. And I then ask the Cabinet members to speak into their microphones so their vote is clear to both Cabinet and those watching this webcast. And members should respond for, against or abstain when their name is called. Uh, so before we uh, crack on, can I just check that we have Councillor Grendel Chamberlain, who's the chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee, present, please. Good morning, Leader. I am indeed with you. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much, Councillor Chamberlain, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. So moving on to our agenda, um, Jonathan, are there any apologies for absence, please? Thank you, Leader. We have apologies from Councillor John Williams, the lead cabinet member for finance, and Councillor Judith Little, the Vice Chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Thank you very much. And I will uh, be standing in for John Williams, uh, who's kindly sent me his notes that he was going to uh, present for uh, the larger part of the, the agenda. Uh, so do members have any declarations of interest, please, related to any bis items of business on this agenda? No, well, if any item uh, subsequently becomes apparent, uh, just raise it at that point, please. Um, so on announcements, um, I would just like to announce that we are deeply saddened to uh, learn of the death of Captain Sir Tom Moore, and we shall be flying our flag at half mast at South Cambridgeshire District Council to show our respect and as expression of our, our sadness for the fact that he has died very tragically of, of COVID. So moving on to the minutes of the previous meeting, um, members are asked to approve the minutes of the meeting, which was held on the 18th of January, only a moment ago. Um, and I move the approval of those minutes as a correct record. I will just go through them page by page. Uh, so they start on page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and page six. So if there's no issues, I gather Councillor Aidan van der Weyer is going to second the minutes. Um, yes. Thank you very much. So do members agree to approve the minutes? Agreed. Thank you. Does anyone wish to vote, vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? Nope, thank you very much indeed. Uh, so I believe we have on public questions. I believe that we've not received any public questions ahead of this meeting. So I will now move on to the issues arising from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Um, Councillor Chamberlain, do you want to introduce this at this point or within the body of the agenda? Well, I'm quite happy to introduce that now, Leader, if I may. Yeah, that's lovely. Uh, thank you. I would particularly try to draw the attention of Cabinet to point seven, which relates to the changes that have been introduced to the 
a public works loan board scheme uh, where the requirements are have now placed another hurdle in ahead of us and we will need to be extremely careful in order to comply with that and use the public works loan scheme i think that was the biggest issue chair uh, leader the uh, the remainder of the report stands on its merit the reports that we had as you will see from point eight that we thought the reports were very clear and concise and we thanked the officers for so delivering thank that's you, it for me Leader. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Chamberlain. Uh, so the, these changes to the Public Works Loan Board we will discuss later in the agenda. Um, I assure you, um, both myself and Cabinet have spent a considerable amount of time trying to battle our way through the lack of clarity yes. about the Public Works Loan Board, but we have decided um, on the recommendation of our officer that we will continue to rely on the Public Works Loan Board and therefore complying with uh, these still unclear uh, rules around it uh, is going to be very, impo very important indeed. But I thank Scrutiny for the attention that they have given to that. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to um, the set item number seven is actions taken under the Chief Executive De Delegated Powers. Um, there's only one here which relates to, uh, to COVID and the grant and members are you're asked to note the report. And moving on to um, some nice things. This is the doubling nature strategy, um, which I am going to introduce. And I believe Councillor Toomey Hawkins is going to second. So the, dub the doubling nature vision um, came out of the work that was done by Natural Cambridge Show. And we're very, very grateful to them indeed for um, in instigating what is actually a really very exciting vision and potentially a very, very useful tool for us. Um, you know, we have a, a strategy today, which um, I hope we are going to approve, which I think my right and say has to then go on to full, full council, I believe. Just checking that. Um, but this is, this is really, you know, committing, committing this council to doing big things and small things in order to address what is a very serious uh, deficit in South Cambridgeshire in, in, in nature, in environmental capital. We have fewer trees than most other parts of the country. Biodiversity is in decline and we, are, we have a shortage of you know, high quality natural space for people, people to access. So we have communities who have serious difficulty in uh, being able to walk or cycle or have other sorts of recreation really close close to nature. So I'm very excited about this and I think we are absolutely leading the way. Uh, so I have already asked our, my commu our communications team to um, send out our strategy far and far and wide because I think many other councils are going to be very interested in following our lead here and um, you know, I think we are. I think we are um, the first of the district councils in the district to adopt this doubling, doubling nature strategy. I think that's quite unique. And I have talked at length about it at the Oxford Cambridge Arc, and I am hopeful that the Oxford Cambridge Arc will also adopt a similar strategy on a much wider geography, which will have huge benefits for for us as well. So I think we are we are leading the way here. Um, there's been a tremendous uh, team effort going into this. So we have officers from all over the council have uh, put in considerable efforts. Uh, Siobhan Mellon, who's the development officer for climate and environment, has done a phenomenal amount of work. But then also we've had the Ca uh, Greater Cambridge Shared Planning, Natural Environment and Planning Policy teams consisting of Jane Green, John Connell, Daniel Weaver, Miriam Hill, Stuart Morris and Nancy Kimberley heavily involved. And then our Air Quality Scientific Officer, Soraya Hashimi, and our Housing Neighbourhood Services Manager, Jeff Clark, and uh, you know, led, led by, by Trevor, obviously um, taking control of the, of the whole thing overall. So a tremendous team effort across the whole council, which I think is going to deliver huge benefits. Um, so uh, the last thing I just want to say is that it's, it's the big things we can do through our local plan in doubling nature, but it's also the little things we can do and our 
three free trees, which turned out to be a terrible tongue twister, was one little thing we did, which actually triggered our communities to do more. So we gave them three trees and quite a lot of them went, then went on and planted 10 trees or 30 trees. So I would like to uh, commit us now to running that initiative again. Just to save us all from the tongue twister, we'll do four free trees this time round. It's not a lot better, but it's a little it's a little bit better. And then perhaps next year it can be five free trees. Um, it'll get easier when it gets to six, which is as far as saying it's concerned. So, you know, the little things make a difference, um, but it's the impact that we will have as far as our spatial planning is concerned that will really, really make a difference to people, people's lives. Um, so, Councillor Hawkins, do you want to um, say anything at this point? Uh, Brid Bridget, Rory's wanting to contribute. I don't know if it's important. Oh, OK, thank you. Uh, so thank, thank you very much indeed. I haven't seen that. Uh, Rory McKenna, would you like to come in? Thank you, Leader. Just a very, very small point of clarification. And it's just to say that the strategy, uh, it doesn't go to full council. It's approved the strategy today at uh, Cabinet today. That's really kind of you to remind me of that. Thank you very much indeed, Rory. So we are, the approval is today. So that's really exciting. So everything can launch as of now. Okay. Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you very much, Leader. Um, in many ways, I am pleased to second uh, this report and this strategy um, that are recommending how we double uh, nature. Uh, in particular, because it is complementary work um, it is complementary to the work that the Greater Cambridge Shed Planning Service is doing in mapping out uh, opportunities for natural and semi-natural um, spaces as we develop our new local plans. Um, the national policy planning policy framework does require us to identify and pursue opportunities to secure biodiversity gains. So we know we have a huge role to play in implementing this doubling nature strategy through our planning policies. And in response to that, uh, you might all remember that one of our four key things for the new local plan is biodiversity and green spaces. And so to underline the importance of this theme and for the first time in the history of this council, we included a call for green sites in our call for sites process. And I'm happy to say that we did have uh, some submissions for that. And um, furthermore, we have commissioned work to provide us with evidence and detailed information about the natural capital that we have in South Camps, how much of it, where it is, and opportunities to enhance and expand on them. And um, we have a report um, that we, we published back in November on that. We have also adopted a new Greater Cambridge Sustainable Design and Construction SPD, and we're now developing a new Biodiversity SPD. And finally, but not least, we know that water is a huge issue. And so as part of our evidence base for the new local plan, we commissioned an integrated water management study last year. We published the interim report in November and it highlights that there is no capacity for abstraction from the chalk aquifers to supply additional growth levels and major new water supply infrastructure <laughs> will be required. And we're currently working with our partners, including Water Resources East, who are now planning regional solutions for this challenging situation. So Greater Cambridge Service uh, Planning Service is looking forward to playing our part uh, in Dublin nature in the district through our current and new planning policies being worked out now. And I highly recommend this strategy to uh, Cabinet. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Hawkins. Are there any Cabinet members who wish to speak on this item? Uh, yes, I, I do. Just, Thank yes. you. Thank you, Councillor Van der Weyer. Uh, yeah, so I think this is a, I mean, a really fantastic um, uh, bit of work uh, that's really going to set up, says that well. Um, it identifies uh, the, sort of the problems we've got and uh, details what the situation is and, and sets out a strategy for coordinating uh, all the work that can be done um, in addressing these issues and in improving um, nature across the district. And that, and that coordination is absolutely vital because, as we know, uh, uh, as we've seen so many cases, this put, putting resources is disjointed efforts um, is, is just inefficient and ineffective. Um, as a council, we interact with nature, we have an impact on nature in so many ways. 
um, uh, directly as an organisation and through partnerships. And again, that is that is set out very very well in this um, uh, in this strategy document. Um, uh, one example uh, is is chalk streams. Um, uh, that there's been um, uh, uh, I mean, a lot, lot of concern about that. Uh, uh, we we have some some role uh, some significant roles in in um, uh, improving and protecting the chalk streams. Uh, uh, Councillor Hawkins has just talked about some of those through, through the local plan policies, uh, sort of water management, um, also, uh, and and identifying the green infrastructure, uh, and also uh, we we can uh, and the the, the uh, uh, plan, that has been a sort of ongoing long term uh, effort by by our planning team to be um, integrating that work into um, into our planning policies. Um, and also uh, our, our work with, with, with partners, um, with the uh, Wildlife Trust, with the um, Wild Trout Trust, um, for example, Water Resources East, uh, Cam Valley Board, and a whole range of um, uh, bodies um, that, that, that um, we can support. Again, so that so we can do things directly and, and we can um, uh, help others, uh, work with others. And, and for that to be most effective, uh, uh, a strategy like this, uh, as of, uh, over the top of it uh, is really vital. So this is, this is um, an excellent step forward. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Van der Waer. Uh, Councillor Mills, you want to come in. Thank you, uh, Leader. So I just wanted to echo your um, compliments and thanks to uh, Siobhan Mellon and the other members of the environment team for uh, putting this comprehensive report together. Um, it's something that is very pleasing to see us all get behind. Um, and there was just one um, other thing. I, I quite like the rhyme of the three free trees. Um, so maybe we could keep that even if we want to give them four uh, quietly. Um, and, um, <laughs> I'm not sure officers will forgive me, actually. <laughs> so um, and, and just to mention that this has spawned uh, lots more tree planting. Uh, so um, our parish council here in Sawston, for example, has gone to the Woodland Trust who are giving away hundreds of free trees. Um, and it was uh, our, our policy of three free trees that spawned that process. So long may it continue. Thank you. That's that's really nice to hear. Thank you. So if there aren't any more members of cabinet who wish to speak. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Hazel Smith. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, could you put it in the chat if you want to speak, please? It, it was. I'll message was you it? as well. Bridget, it wasn't oh, okay. for the, oh, all right. Sorry, I'm trying, I've got so many screens yeah. and things to look at here. It's a bit uh, bit crazy. Thank you, Cous Councillor Hazel Smith. Yes, yeah, sorry, leader. I was a bit slow off the mark and too busy juggling screens myself. Um, <laughs> um, yes, uh, certainly true in Milton that uh, we've recently planted an orchard. So um, yes, that that has set minds to work to. to um, to, for parish councils to think of areas that they that they could set aside for tree planting. Um, I just needed to make um, the point that on page 13 of the strategy, 27 of the agenda, it talks here about working closely with our tenant participation group. Um, indeed, we are we are doing what we can within our council estates um, to to make them greener and um, liaising with all the tenant representatives, that wording just needs to change because the tenant participation group is being replaced in April, May by the um, Housing Engagement Board uh, as we are uh, responding to the Grenfell report and changing the way that uh, housing tenant engagement is happening. So there will be elections in April for a new board. Um, so we should be using the new terms, um, possibly just talking about uh, tenant groups um, are involved with this. That, uh, that's lovely. Thank you. Uh, so we will change the recommendation to include um, with with minor amendments Thank you. to it as well, because I gather you've picked up you've picked up some other little typos as well, which I gather you've passed on to officers. So we'll just get those sorted out before we go uh, before we publish this later today. Thank, um, you. thank thank you very much indeed. So uh, coming on to um, councillors, uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yes, I, just as this isn't coming to um, full council, I just wanted to wish you the best of luck with this policy. I think it is it's a good um, good strategy and uh, taking things forward. So um, had you come to council, you would have had, I'm sure, all of our support. Um, 
I, and also just what was referenced earlier that um, tree planting as well some of the work the parish councils are doing is is really helping with this so um just to name one of mine super modern this winter have planted 84 new trees in their parish you know and um and they've got a long-term plan and, and have budgeted for it so i think um between all of us and the support we can give everybody it's um hope to be achieved and i i look forward to see when we're troubling our nature Hey, thank you very much for that that feedback. I mean, there's a very apt saying, isn't there, about mighty oaks from little acorns grow. And uh, I think what we're doing is planting planting forests from our little acorns. That's 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 great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor De Lacey. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, can I add my congratulations to the group that has uh, produced this report? Um, I have two small observations and then a, a more substantial question. Uh, the first one is that it doesn't look terribly green, if I may put it this way, to have so much green ink uh, on the report. And um, I have uh, all the way through my time on this council tried to encourage us to use as little colour as possible. Uh, and I think whole pages of green do look a little bit worrying. Um, it also looks as if we've just pinched some of our pictures from Shutterstock. Uh, and I would encourage officers perhaps either to uh, pay to have that removed or to find better pictures. Uh, I think that would improve the general visual effect that this, uh, this, this report gives as it goes to the wider public, but I do support it wholeheartedly. Uh, more importantly, I'd like to come back to water. Um, when we had a presentation from um, Cambridge Water on the development of, of the um, uh, the, the, the new water uh, treatment process. I always get confused. Is it Cambridge water or is it Anglian water? Uh, whichever it is, anyway, uh, Anglian. Um, I raised the question of whether they would be producing at the end of the process potable water. And uh, then I said, well, could we put it back into the into the water supply to reduce the strain on the on the uh, Cam River? And the answer was the world isn't ready for that yet. Well, that's simply not true. The world is certainly ready in Australia. There's a huge amount of this. And I hope we might encourage Anglian Water to think again about uh, what they do with their effluent. I realise it's important to have decent flow downstream in the river. But as we get more and more water stress with more and more uh, residents being uh, encouraged to move into uh, South Cambridgeshire or indeed to, to, to be born and grow up in South Cambridgeshire, I think this is one way that we could encourage sensible use of water and the reduction of the strain on our water services. Thank you, Leader. So thank you very much, Councillor De Lacey. So there's no intention to actually print print this report. It's an e it's an e report. You know we are really uh, so. You know I'm doing my very best today to be to run this meeting in a paperless way. I did have to print out some of Councillor um, uh, John Williams's stuff, but you know we we are doing our utmost to to minim to minimise paper. So there is no intention to uh, for the council to be print printing this as such. Um, and that's that's the that's true really of of just about everything that we can get away with. The only time we print stuff is when it's for people with uh, no no access to uh, computers themselves. Um, I will will I'm sure comms will pick up uh, your concerns about the pictures. I thought most of them were quite nice actually, but uh, we'll certainly fill that back feed that back to them. Now on the issue of Angley Water and the new waterworks and potable water, uh, it's not my impression that this has just been discounted. I think it is still absolutely in in the mix for, cur for current discussion and um, you know it's certainly something that we, we will continue to to raise with them. Uh, as you say, it is theoretically possible, but um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's still it's still on the agenda. I don't know if anybody has any more up to date information on that than I do. Probably not, actually. OK, all right. So um, but we will keep you posted on that, Councillor De Lacey. Thank um, you very much. Oh, my, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Claire Daunton. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, so taking account of what um, uh, Councillor De Lacey has just said and what you yourself have said, Leader, I would just like to commend the report for um, the layout, um, the clarity, um, the ease of reading it, um, and also to hope that both parish councils and schools uh, will take it up because I think it's pitched 
um, at really at an appropriate level. So congratulations to people on that. And I hope it will get a wide readership. Thank you, thank you very much. So, um, so I've certainly written a big list of people I want this report sent out to, and I, I hadn't put parish council on it, but you're absolutely right. Um, so if it could be sent to parish councils as well, um, that would be marvellous. Thank you. And I'm sure they'd, they'd appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Daunton. Um, so, um, Councillor Anna Bradman, do you want to speak now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Leda. Um, I just wanted to say I think it's an excellent report uh, for all the reasons that uh, Councillor Daunton has described and, and also uh, very nicely pitched. So thank you very much for that. Um, I, I can almost offer the officers places where they could take photographs to um, replace the images on pages 22, 28, well, 8, 14, 25 and 31. Um, and I also wanted to thank you very much for undertaking to continue with the three free trees policy, because I think that has really, what it's been Im important about is that people actually not only planted the trees but want to look after them and so I think that's really engendered a, a lovely community feeling and, and a, a recognition that trees are important and valuable so um, for trees would it be even better however you describe them and indeed as Councillor Smith says in Milton we've now got a small woodland uh, supplied with whips from the Woodland Trust so it's been a very good prod in the right direction thank you. That's lovely. And of course, you know, our, in a pandemic, we can't be sending our officers out with cameras taking photographs. Unfortunately, they've got to make the best of uh, what's available online. And, and, and I like them. I think I think the report looks great. Yes. I'm really, really pleased. I'm really pleased with what our officers have, have produced under difficult circumstances, we must say. Um, so moving on, uh, Councillor Nigel Cathcart next. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I fully I fully support this. I think it's excellent. Uh, it's fairly high profile, which is even better. Um, and I remember years ago when we had a conservation committee and we were discussing endlessly these sorts of subjects. And the problem is it was very difficult to actually get anything done. We actually were uh, not able to really influence policy effectively. This is an opportunity where it goes absolutely to the heart of policy, in fact. So I think it's excellent. Um, I think your, your point about small things and big things is good. Uh, in fact, the big things is often the sum of the small things, in fact, you know, so we need to look at both. Um, uh, and certainly uh, our natural environment has been damaged significantly many years, but there's an awful lot left. And also the key, one of the key points is an awful lot can be enhanced and improved. Um, and I think that's that's part of this strategy. So it's a high profile, the scope for improvement and the point about water is excellent. We need one of the things we need to look at is the quality of our chalk streams and the chalk brooks, um, which we still have there, but they've been much diminished. It's huge scope for improvement. Um, at one stage, we had an our ecology officer. We still do, in a sense, because the role is split up between various people. But it might be nice to consider having an ecology officer at some stage, maybe to sort of steer these things for income. So it's just a, a, a possibility for the future. But in general, excellent. Keep up with it. And I look forward to coordinating, which is excellent, and also working with local groups uh, because this, 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 this issue of coordination with all the various people doing similar things is very important. But well done. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Cathcart. So I think thinking back some years when we had an ecology officer who was just marvellous and who I still have lots of dealings with in his in his new role, um, you know, that was because actually we didn't do a whole lot then. So it was, you know, one officer could do it. But actually our ambitions are so high now that yeah. there has to be a team approach to this. If it's all if it's all left to one person, then yeah. there's no way that we're going to be able to deliver on what we want to, which is why, you know, I read out that big list of people who had contributed contributed to this this one report so I absolutely support this this team this team this kind of whole council approach really to this you know the whole the whole council is is now involved um, and you're quite right to say this isn't just about um, developing new stuff new woods new grasslands it is absolutely about preserving what we have and enhancing what we have as well so that's absolutely critical because we've got to kind of stop the rot as far as loss of nature is concerned and we have to do that straight away in fact we're all you know we are some 20 years 
too late for some some areas. So um, so you're quite right. You've picked that up. So thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Jeff Harvey. Uh, Councillor Harvey has just messaged to say that it's too noisy where he is, so he can't speak. So uh, oh, there are okay. no. Oh, okay, that's fine. Well, um, we can. I'll try and catch him later and see if I can answer his question then. Uh, so, um, are there any other questions? Yeah. Um, if there aren't, then I'd like to say something about the recommendation. Yes, thank you. I cancel Aidan Van der Weyer. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so uh, um, uh, Councillor Hazel Smith um, uh, raised the, an issue um, with, the, with the content, and I think there might be some sort of typo y type things that, that are there that would be dealing with. So, I would just suggest that the recommendation uh, is modified slightly to add the words after it, subject to minor amendments by the lead officer in cons consultation with the leader. To, to cover off any really minor typos uh, that we're talking about. So, um, okay, thank you. Thank you. So has that been cap that's been captured by officers? Yep. OK, so bef uh, so before we just wind up, um, I thank the team of officers at the beginning. Um, but you know, this wasn't just officers leading on this. We had um, huge member involvement. We uh, we ran two workshops, which uh, a huge number of uh, members participated in. So I would like to thank also all those members uh, who have contributed to this piece of work because their input was invaluable, and we have considerable expertise within our within our councillor membership as well. Um, but most importantly, um, Trevor Nichols, who has coordinated all this and pulled it together and shown um, outstanding leadership has actually turned this round in a, you know, a, quite a short time frame for local government. So thank you very, thank you very much, Trevor. Uh, so we're going to come to uh, the recommendation as amended. Uh, do, all mem uh, do all members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Does Agreed. Anyone wish Agreed. <laughs> thank you. Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. Lovely, right. So moving on now to um, so many bits of paper, the Greater Cambridge Housing Strategy Annexes, uh, which is a fairly meaty, meaty document. Um, so Councillor uh, Hazel Smith is going to introduce this and Councillor Aidan van der Weyer is going to second it. So uh, if I can pass over to um, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chairman, Leader. Yes, um, we, we adopted our Greater Cambridge Housing Strategy jointly with Cambridge City Council a couple of years ago. Um, and these, these housing policies help us to bridge between the current local plan and the plan in development. They were anticipated in that housing strategy and once they're adopted, they'll become material planning considerations. So that really does help us. They cover three issues that have recently emerged where our current policy needs strengthening. The first one is build to rent. This, this was introduced in a review of the NPPF um, and this policy should help us to fulfil our role in placemaking to ensure that build to rent when it is built out is implemented in a way that is sympathetic to our current policies. And that does include affordable housing and how we deal with that. The second is on clustering and that brings in different rules on our new higher density sites and larger developments. Otherwise, uh, what's proposed is similar to our current guidelines. The third policy is on setting of affordable rents, which has had to change because of the raising of the local housing allowance by the Chancellor, which happened in April 2020 as a response to COVID. Um, this has had unfortunate consequences, particularly for families that are just about managing. Um, some landlords have increased their rents accordingly because they know that the housing benefit will cover it. Um, and so that has no consequences for people on full housing benefit where their rent is paid. But for people just above that level of income or who have hit the benefit cap, possibly because they have a large family, it can make the rent unaffordable, pushing people onto benefits or into debt. 
So we're proposing to ask registered social landlords in the area, these are housing associations, to rein back on this increase in rents so these homes remain affordable. And uh, the policy gives a framework for doing this. Um, I, I would ask that minor typos can be corrected at my discretion and these draft policies be approved to go out to public consultation now. The recommendation is to give authority to the lead member for housing to then give final approval after any minor amendments from the public consultation. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Smith. Um, Councillor Van der Weyer, do you want to speak at this point? Uh, no, well, to just really say to, to support these these changes, um, uh, which are very good. I mean, especially the 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 um, built event and the clustering ones are going to improve the way that we um, uh, build out our our new developments, uh, um, speed them up, speed out the delivery of these of the of our new housing that we've given permission for and allocated in the level plan, uh, and and make sure that they are as, as um, excellent places to live in. So I totally support this. Thank you very much. Yes, I mean, built to rent is interesting. It's a sort of, sort of, sort of new new model for delivering um, rentable housing, uh, which you know we we've had quite a few presentations on. So it will be interesting to see that come for, come forward to see how successful it is in in South Cambridgeshire. Um, are there any questions from any cabinet member? No. OK, so then I'll come on to uh, Councillor Claire Daunton. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, so it's just a point of detail on page 74 of the agenda, um, the section on clustering. Um, so at the top, section 8, tenure distribution. Um, I, I just wanted a, a clarification. This is to do with the over 55s. Um, the uh, remark there concerning a designated area for the over 55s, I presume that would be materially different from what we currently understand as sheltered housing. Councillor Hazel Smith, would you like to answer that? Yeah, I'm struggling to find this because I haven't got the full agenda printed. So um, which which paragraph in the po policy is it? Hazel, uh, I can help with that. It jumps yeah, that yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what we're saying here, Councillor Daunton, is that in, in most cases we would expect um, all sorts of housing to be uh, distributed um, uh, across a development. However, in some cases, there'll be a need to have that, that those, those uh, properties closer together uh, in specialist housing scheme. We used over 55 as an example, but it also could be a, a scheme for people with learning disabilities, for example where they need to be close together to to make sure that the uh, the relevant support is offered so it's 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 not saying that it's going to be a different sort of accommodation it's just saying that in certain circumstances there's an overriding need um, where clustering would be beneficial for the scheme and this is just to allow that uh, uh, thank you uh, mr campbell I, i'm actually very pleased to see it in there i have to say i think it's a really important area of housing policy so thank you uh, thank you thank you very much indeed um peter uh, so if i bring in uh, councillor heather williams now thank you leader um i just wanted to clarify um something around the clustering because when we sit on planning committee when we're looking at clustering we're also talking about disbursement as well through the site and just wanted to make sure that these new changes weren't going to affect that. So I noticed the word disbursement's not in it. It just says it can't be in close proximity, but um, and that it if it's in phases, but we have seen sometimes it's not phased it, a development. I believe it was I think it might have been sourcing, but that might be or Cottenham, I can't remember which, where it was either side of a road and all the affordable housing was actually on one side of the road. So I'd be very keen if we could have disbursement in through the site in there as well. But you might, the clarification might be that the planning policy still overrides this. So that was my observation. So I, so I imagine it's planning policy. Shall I, uh, shall I bring in um, Peter Campbell on that? Uh, yes, Councillor Williams. The, the uh, intention is that exactly uh, as you state, it's to um, uh, avoid uh, concentrations of, of certain type, uh, certain tenures, 
and and to allow those to be spread uh, to be spread uh, if the terminology that we normally use is disbursement i think it's a good point that's well worth we, we can bring that in, into the policy for absolute clarity thank you Thank, thank, thank you. That's, you that's, a helpful, that's a helpful point. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, moving on to Councillor De Lacey. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, two perhaps rather small points. Firstly, on page 51 of the agenda, um, there is a rather odd graph. Uh, and along the bottom, uh, there are one bed, two bed, three bed and four bed houses. I'm puzzled that it's a graph since there isn't such a thing as a 3.1 bed house. Uh, it's simply four distinct points, and I think the graph might actually confuse some people. It did me for a short while. Um, then on the annex, right at the very end of the report, page 87 of your agenda, page 33 of the report, ends on something of an anticlimax, and it looks as though something has been left out of the last sentence, which says, therefore, provision has been made within this policy for affordable rents to be charged at up to 80% of a median market rent where it can be. Now, they could be just a full stop after that, um, or there could be some additional material. I'd just like to confirm that we're not losing anything uh, at the end of that annex. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. I suspect it's a missing full stop, but I'm going to come to Peter Campbell. Very last, very yes. last sentence of the whole right. thing. First of all, I um, agree entirely with the graphic. It just it's the wrong type of graph. It should be a bar graph, probably. Um, secondly, um, I think I suspect it's probably just a missing full stop. But we'll go back to the um, uh, uh, original drafting of this uh, to check. And if there's something missing, we will uh, uh, reinsert. Thank you very much. So Councillor Smith has got delegated authority to make minor changes and um, and will replace the graph with something that's uh, that's more meaningful. All right, thank, thank you thank very you. much, Leader. Um, Councillor Neil Goff, did you want to come in? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, I, I was just picking up on uh, Councillor Williams' point, Heather Williams' point. That was actually Cottenham, um, uh, was the example. Uh, and it, it, that particular planning application, I recall, sort of was um, a good example of the sort of tension between this sort of concept of clustering and this concept of dispersal uh, and, and getting that right is is I think really important and um, uh, anything we can do in terms of clarification of what we what we're trying to achieve in that I think would be extremely useful um, and, and I'll just point out that there was a, a very interesting article in the Guardian yesterday about Nine Elms now this is an extreme example but uh, of where affordable housing there um, in, in the Nine Elms development around Battersea Power Station is really created segregation by design. And um, that article sort of pointed out the, the sort of second class um, feeling which the uh, some of the residents, the affordable housing have with things like separate entrances and so forth. And it's a really good example of when it when it goes wrong. What, what one's left with. So uh, this is a really important policy and uh, well done for the office putting it together. Thank you. That's that's very sad, sad to hear about in Battersea. I think we are very, I think we are very good at this dispersal and in integration in South Cambridge and uh, it's very important to us. Um, so if there are no more questions, then uh, moving on to the recommendation. So cabinet's recommended to approve the draft policies relating to the bill to rent clustering and distribution of affordable housing and affordable rents as an annex the greater cambridge housing strategy uh, subject to minor amendments which will be authorized by councillor hazel smith uh, do members agree with the proposal agree. 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 agree anyone wish to vote against and anyone wish to abstain OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. OK, so we're now sort of moving on to the uh, part of the agenda that's all to do with money. Now, very sadly, Councillor John Williams is not well this morning and is in bed uh, where I hope he stays until he is well. Um, but he's very generously sent me copious notes. Um, the longest, the longest of which is on this first item. But actually, since every every time Councillor Williams speaks, it's very, very well worth uh, listening to. I am going to read um, read what he sent me, which is what he would have he would have been presenting. Um, so we are now talking about 
Sorry, let me just get back to my agenda. So we're now on item 10, uh, which starts at page 89. So it's a long, long item uh, going on to page 142. And this is the general fund budget for 2021-22. Okay. Uh, so um, this uh, this time last year, when we agreed the current revenue budget, we could not have imagined what this past year has thrown at us and how well our budget stood up to the changes put on it, particularly with regard to loss of income and unforeseen expenditure related to the coronavirus pandemic. So all credit must go to the head of finance and his team and the council's leadership team for this. We've had a very steady ship being steered over the last terrible year. So this council's at the heart of the business and social recovery in South Cambridgeshire, and this proposed general fund revenue budget for 2021-22 is about continuing to give support to South Cambridgeshire's residents and businesses to help them recover from the pandemic in the coming financial year. This proposed budget must also recognise the government's local government financial settlement for the coming financial year, which in the words of the Local Government Association is dependent on councils increasing council tax bills. I'll say that again. It is dependent on councils increasing council tax bills. So due to the continued uncertainty going forward, this proposed budget has had to and continues to be work in process, progress right up to the full meeting of council on the 23rd of February when it's planned to be adopted. So there have been some revisions since you saw it at scrutiny and there may be some more minor adjustments made before it's recommended to full council. So if you go to paragraph 27, there's a table which helps you compare this proposed budget uh, with the approved budget for the current 2020-21 financial year. Please disregard the thousands at the top of the columns. As you can see, we have a net shortfall in resources of around £2.4 million and a net reduction in spending of £2.6 million. And you'll see from Appendix A, that the net expenditure for 21-22 to be met from government grants, business grants and local taxpayers is estimated at nearly £22 million. We're looking at council taxpayers meeting £10 million of this net expenditure with a 10 pence a week increase for the average band D property, bringing its annual council tax bill to £155.31. And this is fully explained in paragraphs 46 and 48. But this, will only, but this will only in part offset the estimated reduction in business rates and also the losses in other government grants. Nevertheless, the council tax bill from South Cambridge District Council will continue to be in the lowest 25% of all district council taxes. We have a local council tax support scheme for those on, low, those on low incomes and other categories such as carers, as well as having discretionary powers to help council taxpayers. So we're really proud of our Revs and Bens team, Revenue and Benefits team's efforts, which have kept payment defaults lower than expected. So thank you to them. So the local council tax collection rate has held up and we thank council taxpayers for maintaining their payments. Despite the uncertainty of the economic situation, we expect, given our experience so far, that this will continue into the new financial year. So not to have to not to have increased council tax by a modest amount would have still meant a funding gap, causing cuts to frontline services, which we're just not prepared to do, such as our new business support and development team, which actually has been a lifeline to local entrepreneurs. But what we have seen is a hit on business rate income, and we have concern that the long term effects of the pandemic in terms of business failures and property may impact on the business rate growth that we've seen to date. And as you can see from paragraph 40, we are continuing with the pooling arrangement we have with neighbouring councils and the county councils, which is permitted under the business rents retention scheme which we estimate will deliver an additional £1 million and more for us, which is very welcome in the current circumstances. We can also say that against this background of less income from business rates and grants, the council's not just relying on more money from taxpayers. To do our bit, 
we've embarked on an ambitious four year plan to transform council service quality, better realign our financial resources to business plan priorities and improve customer service. And as you can see, this has achieved a reduction in net expenditure compared to this financial year. The financial impact of this can be seen from the table in paragraph 33. The details can be found in Appendix D, and we're afraid the gremlins have got into the theme two table since scrutiny and line six has somehow disappeared. This is a mistake and discontinuing the council 034 telephone number is still on the budget. So this one area where we've made further revisions from the paper presented scrutiny, uh, in particular in business growth, where we have reappraised and reprofiled our commercial income and capital charges, not only because of the pandemic, but also from changes to the criteria for a loan from the Public Works Loan Board, which uh, Councillor Chamberlain referenced uh, in his, uh, his introduction. So part of this has been to reappraise our relationship with our shared service partnership arrangements. This year, we introduced a recharge model to ensure that we receive value for money and are not subsidising services in other council areas. And this was a long standing concern of ours when in opposition to the previous administration. So due to the continuing financial pressure on the council, this budget should be seen within the medium term financial strategy and its requirement to include around five million pounds worth of savings during the next four years on top of the 2.2 million pounds in savings already identified for that four year period. Other grants, the council tap, so there's other grants, the council tap, sorry, the council currently receives such as the new homes bonus and rural services grant are expected to be phased out. So things are going to get tougher, not easier. So as to helping our communities and businesses fight back against the pandemic, we estimate that the cost of dealing with the pandemic so far has been approximately £2.35 million. And this is mainly due to increased spending on PPE, additional staff members to help in se several areas such as community response, processing business grants and council tax support and new software for administering all these grants. And to date, the council has received £1.9 million in government grants to help it deal with incre the increased spending due to coronavirus. But there's obviously a gap. If needed, this work will continue into the next financial year and possibly thereafter. So we have to set aside a revenue contingency of a quarter of a million pounds. And as a result of a proposal by the Scrutiny and Overview Committee, uh, Councillor Walker was pleased, sorry, Councillor Williams was pleased to incorporate into the general fund budget a two year post for a welfare and visiting advisor to support and enhance the work of the housing benefit team during this difficult time for our residents. And I thank Scrutiny and Overview for their input there. The government's also making uh, good, uh, making good most of the loss of income from fees such as planning and licensing charges. It's also promised it will make good up to 70% of council tax loss due to the pandemic, although we've yet to be told what the formula is for this. So the direct impact of COVID-19 on our costs in this financial year should be broadly neutral and should not be problematic for the coming year. So as we've reported before, South Cambridgeshire is in a sound financial position and this proposed budget gives us confidence to proceed into the next financial year to support a dynamic council with a positive agenda. So I thank Councillor John Williams for that because um, I couldn't have done something quite, quite so detailed. Um, so I think uh, Councillor Peter MacDonald is um, going to second this. Do you wish to speak now, Councillor MacDonald? Uh, no, I'd simply like to second and support the uh, submission. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, um, I, do we have any other, anyone else from Cabinet wishing to ask any questions about this? No. And any other councillors wishing to ask questions? Uh, Councillor De Lacey, I believe. Thank you, Leader. This is a, a general point about all of these budgetary issues, um, that is items 11 to 15, 
in the agenda, they are all described as key decisions, which seems to me to make sense. But at the beginning of each one, it says, uh, page 89, for example, paragraph two here, this is not a key decision. Uh, and I think that ought to be clarified for each of these items, as I say, 11 to 15. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right, could I bring Rory in, please, to um, tell us what should be going on there? Yeah, um, so later, because these are decisions which can't be taken by the Cabinet and have to be taken by full council, they are in fact not key decisions because key decisions only relate to uh, decisions taken by the executive. Um, so whilst it might seem a bit perverse to say they're not key decisions, given the decision that's been taken, because they're being taken by council as well, they're technically not classified as a key decision. OK, I think I just think I understood Thank that. <laughs> Councillor Dacey, did you understand it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, they shouldn't be regarded as key decisions in the agenda itself, then uh, the first couple of pages of, of this agenda, but they will be so described when they come to council later on this month, I assume. Rory? Well, not not necessarily, actually, because it's only, uh, as I say, uh, because it's the decision that's been taken by, by full council, um, they wouldn't necessarily be described as key decisions. It's only when the cabinet alone takes the decision that I, it would be referenced as a key decision. I think I understand now. Thank you, Lida. Thank you, Rory. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rory. Uh, OK, have we any other questions on this? OK, now look, the recommendations are enormous and um, they cover page 89 and 90, so I'm not going to read them all out. Um, so we will, unless Councillor MacDonald has anything else he wants to add in summing up. Um, I th I, so I uh, thank um, Peter Maddox and his team for all the work they've done on this and on all the subsequent papers. I know that they have bur they have all burned the midnight oil. Uh, you know, things have been financially, uh, thanks to the pandemic, things change sometimes on an hourly basis. And uh, I think we have shown us, ourselves to be incredibly responsive to uh, you know, stuff that's thrown to us, thrown at us hour by hour, which all results in considerable workloads. So, you know, we would not be in the good place we are in without um, Peter's leadership and without his, uh, his team's diligence and hard work. So thank you very much indeed. So uh, moving to the recommendations. Um, let's get back to my, my script. Um, oh, something funny has happened with my script here. OK, so we are recommended to uh, approve the recommendations as presented on page 89 and 90. Uh, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Does anyone wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Thank you very much indeed. Um, right, so moving, moving on. Uh, to item 11 on page 143, which is the housing revenue account. And um, I'll just find my notes. Uh, and I believe Councillor Hazel Smith is going to second this. So, uh, so Councillor John Williams has very kindly provided um, a presentation on this as well. Not as long as the last one, you'll be glad to know. Um, so uh, firstly, we should remind you that the housing revenue account has to be ring fenced from the general fund of the council. In other words, broadly speaking, we cannot subsidise council housing from local taxation and the resource available from investing in our housing is dependent upon the income streams available to the housing revenue account. So the housing revenue account budget continues to be set in the context of a 30 year business plan. And we must also remember that the housing revenue account has to support a housing debt of £205 million, which are the loans from the Public Works Loan Board to enable us to retain all of our council rents from the government. And some years ago, uh, before uh, my time, well, while well, I was an opposition councillor, um, our, our 
tenants voted on whether they wanted to stay with the council or whether they wanted to um, go elsewhere. But uh, very gratifyingly, they decided they liked the council as their landlord. So we estimate the HRA balance at the end of this financial year will be just over two and a half million pounds. And while this is adequate for HRA purposes, it would not be prudent to let it fall much below that figure. And Appendix B shows how we're addressing this going forward. There's therefore no alternative to increasing council rent levels if we are to maintain our drive to improve the customer service to our cut tenants and grow our social housing stock. And we have a lot of people on our housing list, as do all councils, and growing our housing stock is absolutely vital in order to allow us to, uh, to provide homes for people. So rents will increase by 1.5%, which is in line with government policy. And this means that the average social rent will increase to 106 pounds and two pence per week. And in line with rent legislation, our affordable rents will continue to be no more than 80% of the market rent. At the time of writing the report, the average affordable rent was 148 pounds and 18 pence. So we're acutely aware that some of our residents are facing financial problems and financial 21, sorry, paragraph, sorry, somebody, thank you. Paragraph 21 explains that because of the pandemic, current council rent arrears have increased significantly in percentage terms. However, the introduction of the new orchard housing management system should allow for targeted review of tenants arrears and collections. And we anticipate that this position will improve as we emerge from the pandemic. The HRA budget also includes support for tenants, some of whom are receiving universal credit. As the council house building programme, we have external funding from section 106 commuted sums, retained right to buy receipts, and how we utilise these funds is identified in the housing capital investment plan. Councillor Hazel Smith, lead cabinet member for housing, can elaborate further on this. So we therefore ask you to support this HRA budget, which delivers us the financial base to support our ambitious building programme and a service that is fit for the council tenants of South Cambridgeshire District Council. Uh, so, Councillor Hazel Smith, would you like to um, speak at this point? Sorry, I can't, can't hear you, Hazel. Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, yes, ju just, just to say that um, this went to scrutiny in uh, January and um, there were a few comments there about it. Um, the one part which was not looked at by scrutiny um, was the uh, service charges table, which is in Appendix D. Um, and um, this this shows that um, if you look at the penultimate com column there, um, most most of our charges are actually staying flat and um, there is just um, a slight increase in some of them. So um, I don't think I have anything else to say. I'd just like to thank the um, housing uh, staff um, who deal, deal in, in the finance department with, with the housing revenue account for putting this together. Thank you very much indeed. Um, are there any questions from members of cabinet? No. Any questions from councillors? No? OK, fine. So again, I'm not going to read out all the recommendations because there's lots of them and they're on page 143 and a page 144. Uh, so I'm going to see it, ask now if um, Cabinet agree with the proposal. Agreed. 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 Thank you. And does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? OK, thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And moving on to item 12, at, uh, which is the capital investment programme at page 173. And again, I've got a short note from Councillor Williams here. Uh, and so this item is going to be seconded, I think, by Councillor Bill Handley. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, so our capital programme is a rolling five year programme and in, in determining the capital programme, we must comply with the regulations relating to the prudential framework for capital finance. In the light of the impact of COVID-19 pandemic and the change to the PWLB, Public Works Loan Board loan rules, we've had to rephase our capital programme significantly. And the table in paragraph 16 summarises the revised programme, the details of which can be found in Appendix A, and the rephasing of the capital programme can be found in the table in paragraph 26. Um, so, so, uh, so Peter Maddox, I'm sorry, I haven't been inviting you in to comment, which I had had intended to do. Are, are you feeling very sad that I haven't done, haven't done that? We seem to be we seem to be managing, but um, is there anything you want to add on this? Because this has been quite complex. Um, I'm happy to comment on this one. Um, so, um, as regards as regards this report, there were three main areas uh, of reprofiling. As Councillor Smith said, the main area is in relation to the investment strategy. And we had planned to spend 340 million um, over a period up to the end of 2024. But given the PWLB consultation response, we believe it will take longer to spend that money and we may have issues in actually spending all of that money. But clearly, as each project comes forward, it will be considered by members on its merits and whether it meets the PWLB criteria. So we've reprofiled that um, to the end of 2026 now on the basis that we think it will take longer to spend that money because of what's happened. Um, the other two areas of reprofile relate to the South Cambridge uh, um, the greening project. There were delays due to COVID earlier this year. It is now kicking off as we speak. But clearly, the, the level of spend we'd expected in this year will now occur in 21-22. And similarly, there were some works to the hall. Um, at both ends of the hall, there's some um, glass curtain walling that's in need of replacement. Uh, this was due to be done in the final quarter of this year. But again, this is going to slip into the first quarter of next year. And apart from that, um, the programme is broadly in line with what was agreed at Cabinet on the 7th of December. Lovely, thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, I mean, COVID is, is kind of interfering with ev everything, isn't it? Um, Councillor Handley, do you want to speak on this? I, um, no, except to say I'm, I'm fully behind the recommendation. Happy to second it. Right, thank you very much indeed. Um, so I'll just get up the recommendations. Um, excuse me, looked at it. I don't know if you want to... Uh, yes, I think I think um, Councillor Chamberlain, you well, you, you is there anything additional you'd like to say, Councillor Chamberlain, on this? No, the, the report stands on its own uh, leader, and uh, it's a good report. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. So I'm just fighting with my paperless, my paperless pack here. Right, got it. Good. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Right, are there any questions from members of cabinet? And any questions from councillors? OK, in which case we'll move to the recommendation on page 173. Uh, so cabinet's requested to consider the, the report and if satisfied to recommend to full council the revised capital programme aligned, uh, outlined at Appendix A. So do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Agreed. And does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So we now move on to item 13, uh, which is the Treasury Management Strategy. And I'll, I'll just introduce this from Councillor Williams notes and then I will bring you in, um, Mr Maddox, as well. Um, so Treasury, every year um, we now review a suite of documents in accordance with best practice uh, and to ensure we keep up to date with the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy rules. So this year's update of the Treasury Management Strategy is especially important because it takes into account the changes around the borrowing rules for the Public Works Loan Board, which came into effect on the 26th of November 2020. Uh, to enable you to quickly see the changes that we are that are being made to the Treasury Management Strategy, these are in red ink. 
Uh, now, although this is an opportunity to, re to review the whole document, uh, we'll just focus on those changes in, in red. So you'll see that as well as changes to the PWLB borrowing rules, we sh also should have regard as responsible investor the, the, to the SIPFA's environmental, social and governance considerations when monitoring performance. So although we expect that you may your, your main concern will be with the changes to the PWLB borrowing rules, these are, these are explained in paragraph 8.12 of the Treasury Management Strategy document. So basically, if we are to borrow from the PWLB, our 151 officer, uh, Mr Maddox, has to give assurance that not only are we buying for reasons other than primarily for yield, but also no other commercial asset is being bought for this reason by whatever means, including from our own reserves for the following three years. So, you know, this is this is pretty significant stuff. Fortunately, with an eye to the possibility that government would restrict in some way commercial purchases, our investment strategy, which breaks investments into three streams investment types, enables us to meet the new PWLB rules and by not pursuing stream one invest investments, to be confident that we can take on board these new rules going forward. So we have been well, pre well prepared for this, um, fort fortunately. So the new rules are not retrospective and do not affect existing rules such as that to Ermine Street, but new, but new loans to it will be. And of course, this administration has repurposed Ermine Street, so this is now part of our housing strategy, helping us to deliver decent homes that are affordable to live in for those living and working in our drive to work area. And as was mentioned in the introduction to item, item 10 of our medium term financial strategy, this requires us to find over five million pounds over the coming four years. And some of this is to be found from new investments. So for this reason, we've um, we've given this. Um, so for the so for these reasons, the, the reasons given, excuse me, this continues to be achievable. We're in the process of amending our investment strategy accordingly, and this will come to you in due course. And you'll also see from paragraph 10.3 that we also have to consider negative interest rates. Oh, oh joy, something else to contend with. Um, so this is going to be seconded by uh, Councillor Brian Mills. Councillor Mills, would you like to speak? Thank you. Um... Well, first of all, I'd like to um, just applaud uh, Councillor Williams, Councillor John Williams' uh, efforts with all of this and to provide you with all the notes that you've uh, been doing t today. Um, I think the um, the ones, the only uh, thing I'd like to add to those uh, comments uh, was some um, pleasure in seeing that we are adding environmental, social and governance um, considerations um, and I think this is um, a further direction of travel, um, which has included our recent conversations about disinvesting uh, from inappropriate uh, um, investments uh, if, if they were um, found to be so. So um, I'm happy to otherwise support that and uh, thank Peter Maddock again for his and John Williams work and their team's work on this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Peter Maddock, would you like to um, add anything to what's been said? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. You've explained uh, the PWLB rules. The only thing I would say is um, I'm trying to talk to the PWLB to get a li little bit more clarity around how they're actually going to apply in practice. Uh, and obviously um, it's quite early days and I think there's still a little bit of uncertainty about how, about how this is going to pan out in reality. Thank you. Yes, I know the LGA has um, you know, been trying to get clarity over it and it's very it's very irritating that, uh, you know, two months down the line, it's still not absolutely, absolutely clear. But uh, thank you very much. And thank you for um, highlighting the uh, the changes in red. It just you know, I get terribly fed up when I see papers at other places, not not South Cam's other places where you can't do you can't follow the track changes makes life very hard. So much appreciated and the clarity of the reporting is much appreciated as well. Um, so are there any other questions from members of cabinet? No? OK, so I have Councillor Anna Brad 
Thradlam would like to ask a question. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, I, I would just echo your comments about um, making changes clear. It's so much easier to understand and also to thank Councillor John Williams for um, keeping such a steady hand on our uh, corporate rudder. Uh, however, I just wanted to say that when we were at Scrutiny and Overview Committee, we did look at the diagram that is on page 201 of the agenda, sorry, 201 of the agenda, and it's after paragraph 10.4. And we sort of question the merit of that figure because it um, doesn't really tell us very much. And we, we suggested it ought to be taken out. If I, I thought we'd recommended it ought to be taken out because it doesn't really, it just says, yes, that's what we'd like to, obviously we want investment strategy to go up, but it's not a very informative diagram. We suggested it should come out, I thought. Well, I mean, I think I think it is just kind of indicative of what, of what our aspirations are really. I mean, it's not a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a visual rather than a, a proper proper diagram. Um, obviously, the whole point of an investment strategy is that uh, it's it sees growth. Um, so I'm not. I don't. I mean, I don't pers personally personally have any issue with it. But I think what we'll do is we'll let um, if, Mr. If Maddox discuss discuss it with Councillor Williams when he's feeling yes. better. If 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 the, if the cabinet is minded to leave it in. Um, it has a kind of rustic look. <laughs> it does like you. It is slightly rustic. OK, well, look, we'll take we'll take yeah, that away. That and, yes, and I'll, we'll uh, leave it up to Councillor Williams uh, what what he does with it. OK, um, OK, so are there any other questions? No? OK, so moving on to the recommendations. Sorry. Rolling back again. OK, so the recommendations are on a page 185. Cabinet's re requested to consider the report and is satisfied to recommend to Council the updated Treasury management strategy attached to Appendix A to the report, which sets out the policy framework for the Council's Treasury management activity, including one, the Treasury management policy statement, two, minimum revenue provision policy, and three, Treasury indicators. Uh, so uh, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So moving on to the uh, capital strategy, which is at page 227 to, uh, to 246. Uh, so the capital strategy um, was revised to take in the, into account uh, the PWLB rule changes and changes to the SIPFA guidelines. Um, so I think that uh, uh, Peter Maddox, would you want to say anything more about this? Thank you. Uh, just to say um, the capital strategy was uh, a requirement that was reintroduced three or four years ago by SIPFA. It's basically an overarching document that governs um, our capital, our capital program and our capital spend. Uh, and as uh, Councillor Smith alluded to, um, it's also affected by the change to PWLB rules. Apart from that, nothing to do with that. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, and I think Councillor uh, Peter MacDonald is seconding this. Uh, Peter, do you want to add anything here? Um, not really, just to um, uh, second uh, the recommendations and uh, support the um, submission from John Williams and Peter Maddock. Thank you very much. And I see the uh, the changes are highlighted in red again, very helpfully. Uh, Councillor Hazel Smith. Yes, just just one small point on this um, leader. Um, on page 235 at the very bottom there, um, under existing housing, there's a suggestion that we're doing less in energy conservation in existing council houses, which is not true. And I think that last sentence really needs to come out. I believe that it was put in about five years ago when the council house rents were being decreased by 1% each year. Um, that programme, um, which was brought in by the 
government actually finished um, and we had our first increase in April 2020. So there is no longer any reduction in rental income. In fact, it goes up every year. So I, I think it's just um, something that's a hangover from um, a previous report. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, so, Mr. Maddox, is, that, is, is it OK to incorporate that? Of course, yeah, thanks for that. that that's fine. Do we do we need to say subject to minor amendments at the end of the recommendation? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, if we just say okay. that. Then. OK, fine. Thank you. So the recommendation Thanks. is uh, so um, it's OK. Thank you, Peter. Uh, so uh, anyone else? Any other questions from councillors? OK, so the recommendation is at page 185. Uh, whilst a request requested to consider the report and is satisfied, recommend to council the updated Treasury management strategy. Oh, hang on, no, I'm on the wrong That's one. Oh. It's page 227. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Managed manage so far. OK, so page 227, right, the Cabinet's requested to consider the report and if satisfied, recommend a full council won the updated capital strategy attached to the Appendix A to the report which sets out the policy framework for the development, management and monitoring of capital investments and two prudential indicators um, subject to minor, minor amendments uh, delegated to uh, Mr Maddox and Councillor Williams. So, um, if there's no one else wishes to speak, uh, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? No. OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And we come on to our last item, which is the local council tax support, which is at page 247. Um, which I shall get up. Uh, so I gather that this is the annual, annual review to update um, update this uh, the, the local council tax support in line with the consumer price index. Um, Mr. Maddox, would you like to um, give any more detail, or is it quite straightforward? Just, just to say that um, we're proposing to continue with the with the current scheme, which. Uh, really well, yeah. Yeah, just subject to an increase in, in CPI. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, I think we've we've run this. This is the third year, is it? We've run this scheme and it seems to um, it seems to work work very well. So we're, we're pleased with that. Uh, and um, Councillor Smith is going to uh, second this. Do you want to talk speak on this, Councillor Smith? Yes, ju just to say that um, it's something that we have to review every year and um, I'm pleased that we're, that um, it's holding up and uh, as, as the report says, it may need some revision next year, but we don't know yet. Um, but uh, yes, I, I think it's it's a, a very good scheme. Yes, thank so I'm happy to second this. Thank you very much. Um, would any members of Cabinet like to speak on this? No, I have Councillor Anna Bradman would like to come in. Thank you, Leader. Um, I just want to say thank you for continuing with this localised council tax support. Um, I say that because uh, a local case came to my attention uh, in the village um, and uh, where, where it was thought that somebody might be in difficulty. And uh, it transpired on investigation from one of our uh, benefits officers uh, that the person in question was um, benefiting from this localised council tax support, which made that made an enormous difference to what to their life. And um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for continuing to do this because it, you know, it's for us, it's a, you know, a financial decision, but for individual people, it makes such a difference uh, in t into their day to day money in their in their pocket. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for pointing that out. And that's that's, that's the absolute point, whole point of, point of this. And it can be you know, it's a lifesaver really for, for some people. So, you know, really, really important uh, that we continue with it. 
Um, so in the absence of anybody else wishing to speak, um, the cab cabinet's recommended to this the rec cabinet recommends to council um, at the meeting that will take place on the 23rd of February 2021, the adoption of option one comprising the LCTS income ban scheme currently in operation with an upgrade rating of calculation figures in line with the consumer price index. Uh, so do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? OK, so the cabinet therefore agrees the proposal of affirmation. Um, so just before I give the date of the next meeting, I, I meant um, during consideration of item number nine, the Greater Cambridge Housing Strategies and at next, to uh, thank both Peter Campbell and Julie Fletcher for a considerable amount of work they did. My apologies for forgetting to do that. Um, but actually, it's, it's a really, really complex piece of work. And again, I'm sure the, you know, they have burned the midnight oil as well on this. So if they're no longer in the meeting, if somebody would pass on my thanks to them, I'd be very grateful if they're not if they're not hearing it, but certainly minute it. Uh, so thank you very much indeed uh, to um, Cabinet and to all members and officers who participated. Uh, the next meeting of Cabinet is scheduled to take place on Monday, the 22nd of March 2021 at 10 a.m. Uh, so if we could end the live stream there, please.